Julian, welcome. It's been reported that WikiLeaks has released more classified documents than the rest of the world's media combined. C can that possibly be true? Yeah, can it possibly be true? It's a worry, isn't it, that the rest of the world's media is doing such a bad job that a little group of activists is able to release more of that type of information than the rest of the world has combined. Good evening, they're the secret files from the Iraq The war. internet platform Wikileaks fast... Det är webbplatsen Wikileaks som publicerat omkring 400 000 sidor hemligstämplade amerikanska dokument. Wikileaks have made public the most extensive classified military and diplomatic material ever. What they've released is challenging and provoking governments with skeletons in their cupboards all over the world. We should condemn the disclosure of any classified information by individuals and organizations. The people who are in power will not give that power away freely. That is just unfortunately a fact of nature. The Defense Department demands that WikiLeaks return immediately. All versions of documents obtained directly or indirectly from the Department of Defense databases or records. It's only now that the true story behind the development of this closed organization is coming to light. But while the world's discussing whether Assange is a rapist or a saint, WikiLeaks continue to pursue their own political agenda. Every release that we do of material has a second message, and that is we set examples. If you engage in immoral, in unjust behavior, it will be found out, it will be revealed, and you will suffer the consequences. What we have here is a new breed of rebel, IT guerrillas without a national base. Student digs, coffee bars, and server rooms, these are their command and control centers spread all over the world, and the battle's already started. As a general in charge of 120 defense intelligence agency personnel targeting this institution and its products. WikiLeaks have become a global force to be reckoned with in record time. It may not be easy to grasp at first, but the release of classified information is just a small step in a long-term political and ideological battle. And that leaking classified information is a weapon and not a means unto itself. The public has a right to know materials, and the historical record has a right to have materials of diplomatic, political, ethical, historical significance. And if something is interfering with that process, we will undo it. He's been called the Scarlet Pimpernel of the computer age. If one were to judge him on his looks alone, you could call him a chameleon, given the frequency of his change of hairstyles during the six months we've been following WikiLeaks. But if you look under the surface, you'll soon discover that Julian Assange has been revolting against the powers that be for a long time. As a teenager in Australia, he called himself Mendax and got a name for himself as a highly skilled hacker. By the age of 21, he found himself in court pleading guilty to some 20 different charges of hacking. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a back door in um, the US military security coordination center. <laughs> this is the peak security we're controlling the security of Milnet, the US military um, internet. Yeah. Um, we had total control over this for two years. The US space agency NASA is one of the victims of the Melbourne Computer Hacking Syndicate. American investigators, including the FBI, contacted Australian authorities with their suspicions. The court was told the men even tampered with the police investigation into hacking at the ANU. The judge, seeing Assange as just an inquisitive young man, fined him a symbolic sum and released him. However, the trial added further fuel to Assange's feelings about the importance of unrestricted information. Together with some friends, he sets up one of Australia's first internet suppliers and gives people with politically sensitive viewpoints a platform from which to publish their opinions. But when one of his customers publishes secret Scientology manuals, this prompts aggressive efforts to censor him. Helen Coburn, the, one of the lawyers for Scientology in California, I mean, sent many letters uh, trying to attack us, and they ended up hiring a private investigator to 
they try and track me down, um, who did manage to get hold of my silent telephone line and call me up and you know, just as a sort of threatening manoeuvre. I ended up tracking down how they did that. Those efforts to censor the site strengthen his conviction that something has to be done against those withholding important information from the public at large. What well, the problem was, there needed to be more actions that created positive reform effect, more actions that were just and corrective to injustice. Assange sees disclosures as a preventative instrument. It warns those involved in morally questionable or criminal acts that they'll be found out and will have to face consequences. I understood the significance of, of um, disclosures for quite some time. I mean, I registered leaks.org in 1999. In 2006, Assange and a group of like-minded people start building up a special internet service, wikileaks.org, exclusively for people wishing to blow the whistle on abuse of power. His fellow conspirators, comprised of hackers and mathematicians, they're located around the world and communicate via a restricted mailing list. From this platform, they start defining their thoughts of building up a worldwide movement to mass publicize classified information. They affirm that this is the most cost-effective political weapon and that they intend to place a new star on the political firmament of man. Any reform that is large-scale must be based upon information because what else can spread other than um, um, viruses? Only information can spread and achieve large-scale reform. Inspired by Wikipedia, WikiLeaks distribute the leaked information to anonymous volunteers to check its authenticity and eliminate any traces of the sender's identity. It turns out that the majority of the general public has neither the time, interest or resources to analyse WikiLeaks material, but there are professionals to turn to. In 2006, we hoped that the general public would write analysis articles uh, collaboratively and not at all true. WikiLeaks come to the conclusion that media are the only channels that have the resources and motivation required to create a real impact. In 2007, WikiLeaks, in association with the British daily newspaper The Guardian, publish evidence of former President Daniel Arab Moy having embezzled massive sums from Kenyan state funds. Shortly after that, they release a report about the Kenyan police's use of death patrols. This disclosure causes a great stir, but as an organization, WikiLeaks continue to remain unknown to the general public. However, the word spreads among activists far and wide on the net, eventually reaching the German Chaos Computer Club, the biggest and oldest club for hackers in the world. I heard about it in late 2007 from a couple of friends. I started reading a bit more, but I started to understand the value um, of such a project to society. The politically engaged Chaos Computer Club has been fighting a long-term battle for free access to information. One of its members, Daniel domscheit Berry, is quick to recognize the common ground between his view of society and that of WikiLeaks. He quits his job as a computer consultant so as to devote all of his time to the new organization. The question is the attitude. What attitude do you have to society? Do you, do you look at what there is and you accept that as God-given? Or do you see society as something where you identify a problem and then you find a creative solution for that problem? So it is a matter of are you a spectator or are you actively participating in in society. The computer club has put the skills of some of the sharpest hacking talents in the world at WikiLeaks' disposal. What's needed now is a physical haven. Hackers linked to the Swedish file-sharing site Pirate Bay have what they need, considerable technical skills in a place where freedom of speech is unusually free. A lot of the countries in today's world um, do not have really strong laws for the media anymore. But uh, a few countries, like, for instance, Belgium, also the United States with the First Amendment, and especially, for example, Sweden, uh, have very strong laws protecting the media and the work of investigative or general journalists. So 
from our perspective, this is something. If there's any, if there are any Swedes here, um, you have to make sure that your country is really one of the the, the strongholds of freedom of information. You have Sweden to sure has a enviable, although far from perfect, a record in protecting publications. It has a practical record within the past few years of uh, protecting internet publications against censorship. And it's precisely Sweden's unique freedom of speech law that prompts WikiLeaks to locate their main site in this unpretentious basement in one of Stockholm's inner suburbs. Det började med en tunneltjänst att de skulle tunna trafik här igenom för att kunna kringgå vissa IP-bandningar och sånt som har skett i andra länder där som inte gillar Wikileaks. Men senare så valde de att ställa även en maskin här där de publicerar material utifrån. PRQ offer their customers total secrecy. Their systems prevent anyone from eavesdropping either Wikileaks chat pages or finding out who sent what to who. Vi erbjuder dels anonymitetstjänster, så kallade VPN-tunnlar, där en, en klient från utsidan ansluter till våra maskiner som sedan laddar ner den informationen de vill ha. Så om någon försöker spåra dem från slutstationen så att säga, där informationen kommer ifrån, så kommer de bara komma till våra maskiner. Och härifrån så lämnar inte vi ut några uppgifter om vem som hade det IP-numret vid det här tillfället. PRQ har en track record av att vara... Uh, the hardest uh, ISP you can find in the world. There's just no one else that bothers less about lawyers harassing them about content they are hosting. And it's just the attitude that, let's say, works very well with what Wikileaks was uh, set out to do. Här är uh, vår serverhall. One reason why Wikileaks need PRQ is that their operations are protected by Sweden's strict freedom of expression laws, laws which PRQ exploit to the full. We accept everything, everything that falls under, that is legal in a Swedish law. So we accept precisely everything. And we see how immoral or unjust it can be. So we don't even try to make any moral judgments. There is an information bomb that is waiting for them. We stand for the conventional weapons. Och förhoppningsvis så kan den här informationen på något sätt stoppa några av de konventionella vapen. Det är min förhoppning i alla fall. And we aren't talking about any old information. It's from these servers at PRQ that WikiLeaks has, for example, made public a manual from the United States Guantanamo Bay Detention Center. A military manual leaked on the internet is revealing details of the way terror suspects are being treated at the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba. It tells of the use of solitary confinement and humiliation to break down the detainees mentally. Human rights groups have for years been asking the U.S. administration for access to this manual. If you censor important material of this type, we're not just going to criticize you. We're going to take the material that you tried to censor and we're going to spray it all over the world. And we're going to stick it in our archives in a way that's never going to disappear and encourage everyone to get copies of it. WikiLeaks' battle against censorship knows no geographical frontiers. The next step is to publish an internal report commissioned by the multinational trading company Trafigura who are alleged to have dumped toxic waste in the Ivory Coast that caused tens of thousands of people to seek medical care. The Guardian newspaper was going to produce a big story on this. And as a result, they were gagged. The company obtained a secret order in court to gag all the press in the UK from reporting anything related to the content of that report and the fact that they had been gagged. In the US, hackers discover that the Republican presidential candidate Sarah Palin is apparently bypassing US transparency laws by using a private email account to conduct government business. WikiLeaks publishes her messages 